Uh, let's pray. Gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, as we come now to open up your holy word and study. Father, we pray for teachable minds, transformable hearts. Open our ears to hear your message. And as always, hide me behind the cross so that it is your message that's heard and not mine. And speak now, Father, for your children are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This morning we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. It says, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year. It's talking about Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents. At the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? <coughs> Excuse me. Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all the things in her, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. <clears throat> um, scientists talk about, and they say that the fastest animal on the land is a, is a cheetah. Um, I would say that they have never been with a two-year-old inside of a store <laughs> and not had their hands on that child. <laughs> that is the fastest animal on, on land, is a two-year-old. And I think there is a distinct reason why shopping carts are designed to look like cages, <laughs> is to put them little animals in there to keep them. And even then, it's not good enough. Or a two-year-old with yeah. something in their hand they're not supposed to have. Exactly. <laughs> so <clears throat> they can disappear quick. Um, and and even, even when they get older, when they get to be 12 years old, they can disappear pretty quick. And this morning we're looking at, at Jesus here as, as he's 12 years old. And he disappears. I mean, his, his parents and everybody, you know, they, they've been to the Passover. Now they're headed back home. And look. We all know, I remember as a kid growing up, if I was with a bunch of people and there was people my age, I might ride with somebody else or, or have taken or have taken a youth group somewhere and, and you get them all and, and everybody's going to ride with, with their friends and stuff. And then when you get there, you start looking and checking and, uh-oh, we missed one. Um, so, I mean, I, I understand what happened. And even with Jesus right here, his parents assumed that he was with another group. It wasn't until the street light come on and he was supposed to be at the house that they realized Jesus isn't here. So now we gotta go find him. And so they have to go back to Jerusalem and start looking for him. And, 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 and I like... Um, Matt, uh, Luke here, he talks about how they were looking for him with great distress. I mean, think about it. You know, I mean, as, as I was thinking about this, I'm thinking, yeah, I can, I can see that. Because, I mean, not only would it be just the distress of, of losing a child or losing, losing a child, but you haven't lost just any child. You've lost the Son of God. So now, yeah, you're searching all over the place because, you know, you're supposed to be taking care of this, 
of this child and raising him up for to do the work of God and, and to be to be what God needs him to be, and now you've lost him. And, and here's another fear that could very well have been in their minds right here. Has Herod got him? Has Herod finally caught him? So, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're stressing out. They're looking all over the place. They're running all over the city, checking the marketplace, checking everywhere they can possibly think of. And it's interesting, it says for three days they searched for him. And, it's, and what I find interesting about that is this. For three days they searched for him. In a few short years, they'll spend three days not looking for him. Because they, they assume they know where he's at. They assume he's in a tomb for three days. But right now, he's alive and, and, and missing. And so now they're running around looking for him. When they do find him, and, and they're, they're amazed that he's in the temple, you know, and they start questioning him about it. Jesus' answer to them, and Jesus' question to them is, is something that, that I have found interesting. Because Jesus said, asked them, he says, why were you looking for me? Why? And he, he throws a second part in there to that question. And he says, do you not know that I must be in my father's house? Now, when I first read this, and I just read it from a, a, a just to be reading aspect of it, I see Jesus as kind of being, um, I won't say smart alecky about it, but I mean, you know, he, he's, he's kind of, he's like, why were you looking for me anyway? You know, I mean, that, that's, but as I look at it a little bit deeper, and as I look at the gospel, as I tell the gospel, from Dwayne, that question has a whole different aspect as, as I really look at, 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 first of all, look at the situation. Mary and Joseph are looking for Jesus frantically through, through the entire city. And then when they do find him and they tell him, look, we've been looking for you. We've been looking all over the place for you. Jesus says, why? Why were you looking everywhere but where I was at? I was at home. I was in my father's house. I was home. So what? Why were you searching for me everywhere but where I was at? See, that's that's to me, that's the question Jesus is asking them. Because he's trying, because it goes on to say in there in verse, um, in verse 50, it says, and they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. They didn't understand Jesus' question. But the question Jesus was asking them was, is why were you searching all over the city for me when I was right here at home? You ought to know where I would be at. I mean, you... You guys, y'all were the ones that the angels came to and told them about my birth. You are the ones that, that, had, that witnessed my miracle birth. You ought to know where I would be. So why were you searching everywhere else but where I would be? In my house. In my father's house. My home. And that's and that's. An, and understand that Jesus says I was in my father's house. But for us, I mean, when we really think about it, what is home to us? Home is where mom and daddy are at. So for Jesus, home was the temple. 
Because that was daddy's house. Jesus knew where he was. But Mary and Joseph were searching for him. Which brings me to this question here. When we come to church, are we searching for Jesus at church? Because here's, here's kind of the, the, my idea on this. We come to church. We know why we come to church, okay? We come to church to worship God. We, we, we know this. But do we sometimes get so into the idea that we're coming to church, we're going to sing some songs, we're going to worship God, we're going to pray, we're going to worship God, and then, you know, that, that's going to be it. Do we come to church and expect to find Jesus here? That's the question. Do we get so wrapped up in, in, in the term in, in, in the idea that first of all we have to go to church because that's just the way we were raised and we know we're going to get to church and we know we're going to worship God we're going to sing praises to God we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pray to God we're going to hear a message uh, about God hopefully it's from God and not the preacher we we, we we know what's involved, but my question is, do we come here seeking and expecting to find Jesus? As I studied this week for this, understand, I am not trying to step out here and step on toes or, or anything like this. Just remember, as I have said many times before, before I deliver this message to you, I have already been preached to. And if I'm going to answer that question seriously, if I'm going to ask myself that question, do I come to worship, do I come to church and expect to see Jesus? To be the first knee-jerk reaction to that question? Because Jesus is already here. And we and we go through our worship services in that idea and in that, in that way of thinking. Jesus is already here. This is God's house. So therefore, Jesus is already here. So I really don't expect <clears throat> to see Jesus because I know he's already there. And that and that and that is a a Deliver for me, I guess. Because I shouldn't, I shouldn't just half heart well, I can't say half hearted, but what am I trying to say? Um, it shouldn't be a case where I just assume. Because if we just assume we fall into a rut. Now we need to come to church and we need to be actively seeking Jesus. We need to be seeking Jesus when we're in worship service. We need to be expecting Jesus in worship service. And to understand that that means, you know, a lot of times we, we get wrapped up in the idea of saying, if, if something miraculous happens, you know, we go, oh man, we saw Jesus today. Well, we should see Jesus every day. Every day we should see Jesus. And as I as I as I was thinking about this a little bit more and and, and, and convicted myself because of the fact that I was having to admit that that I just expect Jesus to be here. I don't really search for Jesus to be here. You know, I mean, I, I, I just expect him here. Because I know he's here. 
So then I got to thinking, okay, how do I search out Jesus during worship service? Where, where, where do I see Jesus at church? And all I got to do is look in the pews. That's all I got to do. It's not like he's hiding. He's not hiding. He wasn't hiding from mom and daddy, Mary and Joseph, when he was in the temple. He wasn't hiding from them, and he's not hiding from us today. Uh, like Mary and Joseph, we just tend to look everywhere but. We tend to, to get so wrapped up into the ideas and into the traditions of the church and into the way the worship service is supposed to go. And to the expectations that where well, we're worshiping God, we're worshiping Jesus. So we know we know Jesus is there. You know, I mean that that that's that we 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 forget to look for Jesus. Because we just He's here. You know, I mean, it, it, it is, it's like, it, well, here, here's, yeah, this will work. This will work. If I come to church on Sunday, what, if y'all don't realize this or not, roll call is done by your pew. If your pew is empty, you're not here. I know this. Because everybody's just about sets in the same pew. Been doing it for six years. Now, Milton and Shirley, they moved from this side to back over here, but they're still on the back pew. But, I mean, that's how we call the roll. And if, if, if they're not here, I mean, if that pew's empty, we know they're not here. If they're not here, or if you're not here, then Jesus isn't here. Or part of Jesus isn't here. Let me put it that way. Because we are the body of Christ. So when I say, when I say, you know, if, I, if I'm coming and searching for Jesus, and truly searching for him, as long as there's people in this pew, I can find Jesus. I can find Jesus. And let me, our churches, all of our churches, are going to need to see a whole lot of Jesus in the coming of 2019. 2019 is going to be an adventurous year. Very adventurous year. And, and we're all going to need to be able to seek out and search and find Jesus. In Matthew 7, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, Jesus says, if you seek, you will find. We need to be seeking Jesus. We need to make sure that, that the ministries that, 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 that we get involved with we need to make sure that those ministries are, are for seeking or bringing people to Jesus. That, they're, that they are, are, are doing what Christ commanded, seeking and saving the lost. Because there's a lot of people in this world that need Jesus. And there's a lot of people that, that, that are seeking And it's up to us to show Jesus. But when Mary and Joseph were looking for Jesus, they were looking everywhere but at the temple. If we're not careful with our worship services, we won't even seek Jesus. We just assume he's here. And we need to actively make sure that we're seeking Jesus in our worship service. We need to make sure. We need to expect 
an experience with Jesus Christ in our worship services. Expect it. And I'm not talking about some like miraculous healing or or anything like that. I'm just talking about expecting Jesus on a normal everyday encounter in our worship services. First part of this year, I'm doing a series on searching for Jesus. Today we were talking about Jesus and, and how Mary and Joseph were looking for him for everywhere but where he was, where he was, was in worship service. For us, that worship, that for us, that means my question is this. Are we searching for Jesus in our worship service? Are we searching for him? Or are we just going on the assumption that he's here? Because we got to be careful with that assumption thing. Because there's a lot of churches that are that are meeting this morning, and and they're 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 going on the assumption that Jesus is there, and he's not, and he's not, because they're not delivering the gospel. So we got to make sure that our worship services are delivering the gospel and that we are searching Christ. So that's the challenge for this week and in the weeks and in the next few weeks. But for this week in particular, I want you to think about when you come to worship service. Do you just come to worship service to worship God, which is what it's all about? Or do you come to worship service to worship God and, ex and searching for Jesus in your life and in, the, and in the church? That's the challenge this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.